Okay, everyone, this is episode five of Design Lab, and in this episode, we're going to be tackling the topic of orbital shipyard. So this is going to be our first environmental episode, and hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Um, there won't be any like crazy background stuff since it'll be in space. Uh, so we should be able to focus on the really basic compositional stuff, which is most important anytime you're doing an environment. So you can see here I'm writing chroniclesofthevoid.com and that's because this topic is actually brought to you by a couple guys who are making a pen and paper style RPG um, and it's called Chronicles of the Void and I've been doing a little bit of freelance work for them and they agreed that it would be fun to do a video about one of these pieces so that's where we are and if you're interested in pen and paper style RPGs I recommend you check out their site and maybe you can follow along as they develop it uh, but anyway you can see one of my other main notes here is color and that's just because sometimes when you're doing stuff in space it might be tempting to just start with like a black canvas or something really lifeless uh, but I want to remind myself that it's very important to bring as much color into the background as I can. Uh, I don't just want it to be very boring for the viewers. So a lot of good concept art that revolves around space actually has a lot more color than you would think. Uh, but anyway, the other note is the science of space, and that just refers to me remembering that we're in space, so we don't have to obey the basic laws of gravity and stuff like that. And stuff can be very kind of modular and, you know, kind of can go off in any random direction um, and stuff like that. So it's important to remember that. But anyway, let's move on to making our thumbnails. And in case you're new to these little design lab videos, um, each episode usually has two parts. The first part consists of kind of creating ideas and thinking about what we want to do. And then the second video is where we take one of the ideas and refine it into a more finished illustration. So anyway, here you can see me doing one of my environmental thumbnails. And any time I do an environmental thumbnail, I like to kind of frame my little uh, my little picture first. I set up a little framing. And the dimensions of that frame could be, you know, horizontal or vertical. Doesn't matter what the dimensions are. But obviously, because this is for a video, I want the uh, dimensions to be kind of widescreen. So they'll be able to match my video purposes when I'm making the final piece. Uh, but anyway, you can see the first one didn't have any color, but the second one, I'm starting with the really colorful background. And um, it's obviously meant to be a sun back there, and there's a lot of kind of orangeness, and it's just supposed to have this warm kind of radiating feeling. Because um, one of the things about being in space is there's a lot of radiation, and it's just kind of very radiating. There's a lot of energy, especially if you're closer to like a sun or something like that. Um, but that lets you have a good excuse to fill in a lot of color. Uh, so you can see there, I'm just kind of trying stuff like that. And for this one, I thought I'd start with my little orbital shipyard, kind of some kind of hub thing, and then kind of draw the ships on the outside without doing my little framing first. And then I'll come back in and try to frame some stuff out. Uh, because my kind of ideas that I was coming up with for, you know, um, the actual shipyard itself weren't that great. but that's kind of a thing when you're doing environments is that the kind of composition actually kind of starts to trump the other stuff. Um, if I was going to say like what the important parts of drawing an environment would be, it would probably be composition first. And then the second one would probably be the depth, the feeling of depth. Uh, which I did a video about. And then the third would probably be the content. So you can probably make any kind of weird random content look great as long as your composition and your feeling of depth are there. Uh, so that's why that's kind of important. And anyway, here's another idea. Um, and this is going to be to kind of have the Earth or some kind of planet like in half frame. Um, and then have like the sun or something in the background. So this will let you have a lot of different colors. Um, obviously for your planet, you're gonna have some blues and probably a little bit of glowing blue around the edges, um, just for how that kind of environment reflects the sunlight. Uh, but then you can also, once again, bring in a lot of orange and color on one side to show where the sun is and stuff like that. 
But anyway, after I set up these in little kind of backgrounds and stuff, I'm still then just focusing on the compositional stuff, such as having my focal point, kind of where it's going to be, where the eye is supposed to travel, kind of setting up a foreground, which I'm going to make darkest, and then a middle ground, which is kind of not as dark, and then the background will be my lightest. And you can do that differently. It doesn't always have to be that progression of foreground being the darkest to background being the lightest. But I thought for these videos, it would just be nice to keep it nice and simple so if you were to make these grayscale uh, they would always be going backward toward white and forward toward toward black uh, but anyway I'm doing a couple other ones this background is going to be have some reddish colors and um, you'll notice a couple things that I actually notice now but if you look at the third image I did in the top right corner I think my placement on the sun being like right on the edge of the that uh, shipyard is actually pretty terrible and compositionally I think that was a pretty bad choice and if I ever went back in with like that one I'd probably move the sun to somewhere that complemented things better because it just kind of runs into these weird tangents and this is kind of the state of process where you want to kind of focus on tangents and get rid of any kind of things that look like they crisscross in uncomfortable ways or things that just don't look pleasant to the eye um, but it's also your time to focus on composition and stuff like that and uh, some basic compositional guidelines in case you don't have any idea like how to make a really simple composition uh, there's a really basic idea which is called the rule of thirds which you have probably heard of if you're into art stuff uh, but if you're newer you might not know what that means and the rule of thirds basically says that if you were to divide your canvas or image up into thirds both horizontally and vertically um, that your focal points should lie kind of somewhere on those lines. So let me just give you a quick example. If your friend wanted you to take a picture of them, um, you could take a, sig a simple picture where they're in the very center of the frame, and that's a very functional picture. Uh, but if you wanted to be artsy about it, you'd probably put them about two-thirds the way to the right or one-third the way, you know. So they're like on one of those one third lines and that would make it look a lot more kind of artsy and interesting just instantly just by putting them off center like that. Um, it just kind of pleases the eye more. It's just more pleasant for our mathematically centered brains to look at. Uh, but anyway, you can see this piece here. It's also having the like planet in the background. You can see that the planet's on the top and the sun's on the bottom. and. The or I'm sorry, the background is kind of washed out a bit too much and the composition is pretty terrible because you can see this, the shipyards like falling off the side of the page and that's kind of an example of what not to do to have your kind of focal point leading you off the page like that one. Uh, so if I was going to redo that one, I'd make the focal point more on the one third line or something like that. Uh, but I also highlighted some good things to do, and that is to kind of try to create movement and life in your piece. So you can see there's like these little drones and maybe they're like the main things on the shipyard that like put ships together or fix things or fuel things up. So there are these little drones and they all just kind of zoom around from the central hub and go like attend to whatever needs the ships might have. Uh, but anyway, here we can see in the bottom left corner, I'm coming back in with the orange and yellow, and it's just kind of having a really radiated feel where you can't even see a sun or anything. It just kind of has that glow that's permeating the whole area. And that kind of looks nice. I like these orange ones and these kind of stronger colored, uh, these stronger colored backgrounds like that. The second one, and the fourth one's okay with the planet. It could probably be improved. Uh, and that middle one with the red. So I kind of like those ones just in terms of their colors and stuff like that. Uh, but you can see here my shipyard in this one is kind of broken up into different areas. And it's kind of hard to read. Uh, you kind of have to use your imagination. Um, but in my mind, I was kind of picturing these kind of spherical, not spherical, but like... Uh, I don't know what the right word is because I can't think right now, but these kind of rounded objects that are kind of floating in space and they're very modular and they might be connected to each other. And these are like little hubs that the space giant spaceships might attach to. Um, and it's just kind of getting into this whole kind of fiction of what you think space would be like in the future, what spaceships might be like. Um, in my mind, I was thinking that 
they would probably build spaceships to be very kind of long and simple, uh, kind of the way we build both skyscrapers and submarines, where you're building like little chunks of them, uh, little kind of flat dissected like slices of them and putting those slices together, just slowly building it longer and longer. I and mean, that's how you kind of establish your ships and things like that. So all my ships kind of look long and flat and boring like that, but I feel like that's somewhat practical. Uh, but anyway, you can see here my last little shipyard over here. It's just going to be kind of this dual thing um, where I have like two different sections and they're both supposed to be pretty much the same thing, but they're joined by this middle a uh, pathway, not a pathway, but some kind of middle linkage. Um, and obviously that allows you to have one thing be in the foreground and one thing be in the middle ground. And having them be the same thing just kind of allows you to show more detail here and there. Uh, so I drew these little images on the sides as thumbnails, trying to brainstorm if I could think of some interesting ideas for like a space station and what it would look like, or a shipyard, I should say. So there's a lot of ships just kind of scattered around a central hub. And that's just kind of the only idea I had. Um, obviously, you can come up with different ideas for a shipyard, one that might be bigger and like encompassing the ship, like a giant thing, but that seems kind of impractical just because of the size of everything. Uh, but anyway, um, I kind of rambled on about some random stuff, but hopefully you can enjoy this video and you can submit your feedback on what you think works and what you think doesn't, or just talk about the science of space. Um, but anyway, I will be back for part two, probably after I get some feedback from the Chronicles of the Void people. So I'll see you guys soon.